KJ Jefferson and the number eight Arkansas running Razorbacks travel to Athens, Georgia to take on JT Daniels in the number two Georgia Bulldogs. This one is going to be quite an interesting matchup in a weekend that seems to be an SEC festival. I mean, if we look at it. So, to start off the matchup, quarterbacks. Quarterbacks, quarterbacks, quarterbacks. Both of these quarterbacks have been exceptional. I'll, first of all, I will give you the stat line for KJ Jefferson. ESPN faithfully has it for me right here. So KJ Jefferson, 46 for 78, 844 yards, six touchdowns, two interceptions. And he is writing off. <coughs> and he is writing off. Um, he is writing off a win against Texas A&M who was ranked number seventh last week. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is being ridiculous right now. He's writing off a seven for 15 performance, uh, 212 air yards, two touchdowns. But, <coughs> sorry again, my Wi-Fi is being ridiculously slow right now. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, but he rushed 88 times for 50 yards. KJ Jefferson is a dual threat quarterback. And JT Daniels has 54 for 71, 567 yards, five touchdowns, and two interceptions. Man, he sucks, right? I'm joking. I'm not an idiot. Okay. First off, he missed one game, and I believe that one was the South Carolina game. Or, no, I think it was the University of Alabama game, excuse me, where they had to bring in Stetson Bennett, who went off for five touchdowns. Though, um, but JT Daniels was able to play against South Carolina, and then he played one quarter against Van Vanderbilt. So he hasn't been playing full games. Neither has KJ Jefferson as Alabama, Arkansas has blown out multiple opponents as well. They blew out number 15, at the time, number 15, Texas. Though, keep in mind, it was when Texas was rolling with Heward, who clearly is not a good quarterback, and I don't know why Starkeesian kept having faith in him. And then they played Rice. They blew out Rice. They blew out Georgia Southern, and then they beat Texas A&M by 10 points, but Texas A&M is not a top five team. I mean, not even a top 10 team this year, as they have proven over and over again this year. Though, And then Georgia has just been a juggernaut. So they took down Clemson, and Clemson was ranked number three, 10 to three. And it's hard to gauge if Clemson's a quality win at this point, though... I believe that uh, I believe that Clemson's defense is legit, and the, that's why they were still in the game is because Clemson's defense has been dominant. And Clemson's defense does make a case for itself, as in the first three weeks they have not allowed over ten points. They've allowed three points, three points, eight points, and then wait. Oh, they've allowed ten points against Georgia. Excuse me. Three points against South Carolina State, eight points against Georgia Tech. And then I think North Carolina State is where Clemson's defense began to mentally degrade as the Clemson's offense has been non-existent. So I think that getting the win over Clemson's defense is says something in week one. And then beating Alabama, University of Alabama, Birmingham, 56-7. to seven. And then 40-13 to 13 on South Carolina, who has one of has is seems to always be a factory for creating defensive playmakers for the NFL. And then they blew out Vanderbilt with a shutout 62 to 0. 
Georgia is favored to win 89.1% to 10.9% rushing game. So Traylon Smith is the leading rusher, though Georgia has not. Georgia ha is a running committee team, as they also have Cook, and they have Zamir, and they have Zamir White, and they have McIntosh. But Zamir White is the leader with 37 carries for 207 yards, to two touchdowns. Traylon Smith has 59 carries for 298 yards, three touchdowns. Again, though, Traylon Smith has kind of been that number one back for Arkansas. Georgia is a running game by committee, and they have been blowing out teams, so they've been able to just unleash their third, fourth string players. And then Burks for Arkansas leads receiving Niners 19 receptions for 373 yards, two touchdowns. Bowers is the leader for Georgia with 18 receptions, 272 yards, four touchdowns. And Arkansas surprisingly has more total yards per game than Georgia. <coughs> Georgia is a balanced team, though. Uh, same with Arkansas, though. I think... Um, and then Georgia's favored to win by 18.5 points for the spread. My thoughts coming into this... Guys, I'm not even going to pretend that this one is Arkansas's, okay? I am going to say that I believe Arkansas will win this one. I mean, not Arkansas. I'm an idiot. Georgia is going to win this one, excuse me. I think Georgia will win by a few scores. I will be bold to predict that. I believe that JT Daniels and that Georgia offense will get things done. Though, I think the defense will also be a very big challenge for um, why can't I remember his name sorry I'm KJ Jefferson yes and I think that they will have a spy ready for him as he is a dual threat quarterback and they he will be able he will try to elongate the drives with his legs um, but I think that Georgia's defense will be ready they have not allowed a team to score over 13 points, and South Carolina was the team that scored the most on them. Their defense has been phenomenal, and Georgia is getting back to their defensive ways, and JT Daniels is arguably one of the best. Top, he's definitely in the top 10, if not top five quarterbacks in the country. He just has not been able to play a lot of quarters because he hasn't needed to. He, he had to recover from his oblique injury, and seat B, he, um, you know, he hasn't had to be needed as Georgia's been able to throttle everybody. So I think this will be Georgia's game. I think Arkansas will compete initially for a bit, but Georgia will eventually pull away. I think that it will be a few scores. I'm not sure if it's 18 and a half, but I could definitely see a for sure 14 point win. That is my prediction. I could be wrong. Arkansas could upset Georgia. Who knows? I'm not a prophet, but I feel like this is Georgia's game, and I agree with ESPN on this one. Give me Georgia. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you guys did, let me know down below. How can I improve these matchup previews? And uh, what video content should I do? And I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.